All right, everybody, welcome back to the KSR YouTube channel. Sick week prep continues. We've got Vice Grips car. We've got Soccer Mom. We've got Sean's Chevy 2. All nearing completion and hopefully all of them going to the track on Saturday. Today's Thursday. That was a funny look from Will. <laughs> Y'all didn't see that because I saw it out of the corner of my eye. But hopefully all of them going to the track on Saturday. Today's Thursday. And we've got the intake off of Soccer Mom. What the heck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the intake's off of Soccer Mom. What the heck? Well, after talking with the manufacturer of our injectors, he told us he did not recommend to use them on the street. We had some very large injectors on the race side system. Well, it was the only system we had at the time. But for the alcohol setup, he didn't think they were going to be happy on, you know, three, four hour drive down the road. So I've got a mill and I've got a welder. I'm going to add a second set of injectors to this intake. Hopefully. That's one of my projects that kind of popped up here at the last second. Whew, we got a lot of work to do on some other things. Let's see if we can dive in and get all this stuff done. All right, so one other thing we've got for Soccer Mom that we haven't really shown you guys yet, and it's probably gonna be the thumbnail, so you maybe have already wondered what we've got going on. We've got some different wheels for Soccer Mom. Yeah. These are actually ones we borrowed from Will's 88 Camaro, his drag pack wheels. We've got some 17 inch front weld racing wheels. Some big old tall skinnies on there. Did that because really the race wheels we had on the car weren't gonna be great for street driving. And also we need to add some weight. We're gonna be adding weight to the back of the car with the fuel cell, add a little bit of weight to the front of the car. Granted it's unsprung weight, so not ideally what we're after, but if everything works out okay, we'll be able to just bolt some to the front. In addition to what we did in the back, we had the extra weight of the funny car cage, which probably isn't more than 20 pounds, I would think. Plus we took 10 pounds out with the seat might not have gained that much weight there. But the uh, the real funny part of this wheel and tire combination is our rear tires. So in case we ever need to go mudding, we got us some 30 by nine grabber. And uh, <laughs> Will doesn't like it. Sorry, Will, we need the, we need the tall tire. I know, I know. So between the 350 gear in the back, plus these on the street, hopefully we'll be able to cruise you know, 60, 65 miles an hour without zinging the motor to death. No overdrive, so it's gonna be wound up pretty good. These are, I think, 29.5 or six inches tall, even though it says it's a 30, it's not quite a 30. But uh, hopefully with all this tread on there, they make lots of smoke for trailer burnouts only in supervised areas that are off-road. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, well, let's, uh, let's see if these suckers will fit. Every half inch is missing. They're all, all throughout the shop. What do you need, Will? Half inch wrench. I know I had at least one of them out. I have one. Oh, money. Yeah. It clear. Oh, it clears by a mile. Oh, that looks so bad. <laughs> oh, it's so Sorry, good. I you were recording. Got us some mud tars. Calm down, Drew. Calm down. Did he not bucket? No, I told him to only do one. And then he was going to try to get the other one done today and either bring it by if we tell him to or. What other wheel are you talking about? The other... You got, you got yeah. You about the one on six trailers? Yeah, yeah. Something we can put on the ground. I think it's freaking money. It, like, it looks like it should work. We'll I mean, see. We'll see what it does when it goes down. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. You can't say my catch can is ugly when you got them tires in the car. <laughs> Just the tires come off. 
can, does it? Well, I can pick it. <laughs> Close up on the front, but I wouldn't well, really worry about the front. This is about the way about that right there. But it should be. Trailer is not going to weigh a whole lot. I mean, the trailer's not going to be a, a lot of tongue weight, but we can also we can always um, crank up on the cow tracks. All right, well, lots of clearance there. A little bit tight right there, but I mean, it's probably three eighths of an inch. All right. That's our overdrive, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that aggressive tread pattern. It's just some part, part of me wants to see this out in a field just slinging rooster tails 200 <laughs> feet behind the car. Please let well, me know what to happen. Well, I don't want that to happen. What'd you, Will? What'd you say? I said, please let me be gone when that happens. Gone where? Just not around. I don't want to see it. <laughs> Kimber wouldn't either. I, I wouldn't do that to uh, like our car without everybody approving. But this, there's just a part of me that really wants to see that happen. All right. Craziness. We're getting back to work. Lots to do, but lots of things are happening. Well, after the fun with the tires, we're back over to the mill and going to start boring some holes in this intake manifold. And I'll be honest with you guys, this is the first time I have done this operation. Thankfully, I had all of the parts in stock because I had planned to add a fuel injector rail system to my Oldsmobile intake, which you guys will see what's coming more with my old stuff here in a little bit once I get the long block back from uh, the engine builder that I used for it. But I had all the stuff in stock, so I was able to go grab that stuff out of my stash of parts and start using it to mock up on Soccer Mom's intake. I do wish that I had had an end mill that was just a little bit closer to the actual outside diameter of the injector bungs that I was using. Basically, I ended up oversizing the holes by about an eighth of an inch, and that left a sixteenth of an inch gap between the injector bung and the hole that I'm boring in the intake right now, which you wouldn't think is a huge deal. It's a 16th of an inch all the way around. But the problem arose when later in the video we go to kind of port off the bung where it sticks into the intake port. Well, we packed all kinds of aluminum shrapnel in the gap between the bung and the intake manifold. And that led us to a whole lot of cleaning for me to come back in and then what I ended up doing just to make sure we didn't have a problem in the future is I ran my torch down inside the intake runner, my TIG torch, and welded the inside of the bone also to the intake manifold. So in the future, I will order the correct end mill so that we will not have that problem. But for today, it was Saturday, so I had to do what I had to do to make some stuff happen so we could try to get this thing back going. They ended up canceling our track event for Saturday. And as you guys saw in the Vice Grip Garage Chevelle video, we've got to change the torque converter in the Chevelle. So it worked out well that we just jumped back on Soccer Mom and started doing some work on it. Once we had the problems with the Chevelle, I didn't end up staying very late at the shop. I think it was, you know, nine o'clock, maybe 9.30 before I left that night. And I had planned to stay at the shop and finish this intake manifold project so that we could go to the track. But all that kind of changed when they canceled the track event. So we are taking on a few more projects that we weren't going to do before going to the track because we didn't need these injectors to go racing and test, but now they're in there. All right, well, all in the time lapse there, you can probably see that we got the bungs welded on. 
And I've got one fuel rail kind of made and started. Have to fab the brackets that are gonna attach the intake to the fuel rail here. So they're gonna be welded on this side over here. And then I decided to go ahead and do three bolts since we're just using a quarter inch thick flat bar. I figured three is better than two. So we're gonna put three on it. But you might have seen that everything works out really good clearance wise. I'm not sure if this will actually go in. Ooh, they will. Sweet. So two sets of fuel injectors now for Soccer Mom. Get our brackets made there. Weld them on the rest of the way. Then I'll weld 6AN bungs onto the ends here. And then we'll plumb plumb from the back of the car with just a single line because we're just going to um, we're going to put the fuel pressure regulator at the fuel tank just so it's easier to remove the street fuel system if we decide to maybe if we will definitely when we go back to heads up like racing we'll just drop the second fuel tank out take the passenger seat out although it doesn't weigh very much but I've got to get and do a little work on this, which you, that video will probably come out before this video. I'm not sure how it's going to work out, but got to get a little bit of wiring done on that. And Derek will be here in just a little bit and we're going to put it on the dyno. So if that video comes out second, stay tuned so that you can see that one. So we'll leave that with that. And then we'll be back on this probably tomorrow morning and we'll finish it up and get it back on the car and get the car cranked back up again and make sure everything still works. See you then. All right, so now we're moving over to the part of the project where I go in and I port out where the bungs are sticking through to the intake ports. You can see, you know, how far they're sticking in there. Don't exactly do a great job filming this, but you can kind of get the idea of what's going on. And for the most part, I'm only showing you guys half of this whole operation. Like, the last time lapse was welding one side of the injector bungs on didn't figure you guys really needed to see or would want to see all of the welding you know for the whole entire project when you kind of get the idea from one half of the project basically this entire project uh, from start to finish with machining the intake manifold welding the bungs in uh, measuring drilling, machining the rails, which is kind of what we're in the middle of right now. All of that basically took me about eight hours worth of uh, labor time. And some of that was because it was the first one. You can see the machining process I'm doing on the rails was actually several different steps where I drilled a small hole and then drilled a larger hole, chamfered that larger hole, and then reamed the hole where the injector o-rings are going to seal so that i had a nice smooth finish after having done all of that there is a drill bit available or an a special end mill that i can buy that will do all of those steps in one step which will save a huge amount of time in making the fuel rails and also if i get the correct end mill for drilling the holes for the injector bungs that process will go a lot faster because i won't have to set the angle for the injector bungs because they will be a near press fit maybe even a slight press fit once i bore the hole so learning some stuff on this project i try to learn something new every day if not multiple things new every day keeps us fresh keeps us moving in the right direction with being able to support our customers in new ways and for those of you that are really well versed in this stuff you'll know that the injector angle for the top set of injectors really isn't all that great but i didn't want to put the injectors under the intake manifold because we do want to service them and since we are just kind of driving around on these it should still run fine i'm just not a huge fan of the injectors kind of spraying at the opposite wall of the intake port but we're on to fabricating the brackets. You guys can see my little trick for putting some aluminum in the vise so I don't mar up the aluminum that I'm bending. Tweak it with a crescent wrench and send it. 
Well, went ahead and fabricated some mounts like I talked about a little bit ago. And the next plan is to start welding those onto here. Went ahead and did three just because it's quarter inch and the aluminum is kind of in the same plane as where it's going to be trying to push. So I thought a little bit of overkill would be good. But got to weld that. The other fuel rail is in the bandsaw over there cutting. Then we will be welding some uh, 6AN bungs on the end of that. Cleaning the intake out and then putting it back on the engine. Hopefully firing it up here in just a little bit. I'll probably wrap up the video with uh, getting it running again on that. Got a few little things to check. But Kimber and Will are working on getting the interior back in. And something else. Oh, starting to work on mounting our rear fuel cell. So lots of things happening. Get us ready for uh, a uh, track rental next week that I set up where we're going to have quite a few cars out there. Take the Chevy 2, Derek's car, some other local guys are going to come out and join in the fun, soccer mom, and then maybe some other sick weekers that are on their way down to Bradenton. So I better get back to work. We're going to make this. All right, so we're on to the last little bit of this fuel injector project and like I mentioned earlier one of the things it doesn't end up on camera where I go back into the port and TIG weld the the bungs to the port wall from the inside of the runner didn't get that on camera it was kind of a last minute oh shoot we really need to fix this before we start assembling it and putting it back on the car but that happened and I'm welding on the brackets that I made for the fuel rail mounting right now and as you guys might can see from all the time lapses especially in the beginning there was a lot of putting it together taking it apart measuring for clearance there's not a ton of room between the new set of injectors and rail and the old set of injectors and rails just kind of all crammed in there really tight but it ended up working out really well in the end, which you'll see in the last setup where we're starting to put the thing back together, which that'll probably actually be in tomorrow's video even more defined than um, what it's going to end up in this video, just because I got to bail out as soon as I get these brackets welded to the intake manifold and leave it for Will and Kimber to reassemble. Another couple of things we did while we were welding on the intake manifold, the original rail had an aluminum spacer that went between the rail and the intake manifold. And every time we took the injector rail off, which granted wasn't very often, but every time we did, we ended up dropping those spacers, they fall up under the intake manifold and become a fight to get back out front of there because all of our fuel lines are up under the intake manifold, there's wiring, so while I'm doing this welding, I decided to go ahead and put some good tack welds on those spacers. So now they cannot fall off again. Another little thing we did too that doesn't really make it on camera is on a Holly High Ram, on each corner runner, there's kind of a big dimple that sticks out. Actually, it's not a dimple, whatever the reverse of a dimple is. It's a protrusion that sticks out into the intake manifold that is supposed to be there for if you want to put a short set of injectors, you've got a bolt hole available to, you know, bolt that rail on down at a lower location. Well, we're never going to use that hole. So I welded those suckers up too, and we poured it off that little protrusion that was sticking into the runner. So, you know, hopefully we get a little bit better flow while we're in there, always trying to make every little thing we can better whenever we can and it's not a you know we have the time for it so the last little bit of this project we're welding the 6an bungs to the end of the fuel rails and then we're going to match up the bolt pattern on each of the rails because i used one rail for both the mounting tabs so that the rails are interchangeable all right well got our intake stuff all done Kimber's bolting her back together and they're gonna put it on. So I gotta run home and go do some stuff with my kiddos and Crystal. So they'll be putting that back together. And then I'll be back in here 
on Monday to put this together the rest of the way, which this will probably come out on Monday or Tuesday. So that's, I'll be working on the car while you guys are watching. That's just how it goes with this stuff. So appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. Definitely uh, starting to chip away on this thing and get it close to being ready for sick week. It's gonna be a fun week, hopefully. We'll have this one out at uh, the Test and Tune 2. She's looking super pretty with it all powder coated and reassembled. Mm. All right. See you guys next time.